Hey there guys and welcome to my walkthrough on Need for Speed Shift. Now this is the first uh, playthrough uh, I will be uh, actually recording for this game. And usually I don't record racing games because uh, it's really no need for it. However, this game is a little bit different than most racing games because it takes quite a bit of skill. Uh, and it's not like ordinary racing games. Uh, it's actually really realistic, which is why I like it and um, I wanted to record it. So uh, this playthrough is just going to record the main uh, career. And it, it's not really going to um, include, include any multiplayer or anything like that. Uh, however, I do want to... Uh, cover all of the races in the career mode and I'm gonna be explaining each car that I buy and upgrade and I'll be explaining why I do that also I'll be explaining the best way to tackle the uh, many races found in career so first off career is made up of five different tiers starting from tier one making your way to the harder challenging tier five so uh, yeah with all that taken care of, uh, let me just explain. This is my first racing game I'm covering, and uh, I might cover more because I just—I don't know why—but I've had an urge to play racing games. Um, I was in the middle of my Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon, and uh, I kind of got sidetracked and sort of lost interest, unfortunately. But um, I am gonna finish. Uh, it's just on hold for the moment. And uh, I see a couple of my buddies playing racing games, and it kind of uh, drove me to play racing. So I just finished the legendary Need for Speed Undercover game, which is one of my all-time favorite Need for Speed games, by the way. And uh, then I went to GameStop, and I purchased several different racing games, including the newest Need for Speed, Rivals, which is a massive uh, multiplayer online game. But it's not so massive as it only contains six different characters in each world um, but enough about the other need for speeds that I have bought um, we can now focus on need for speed shift now unlike the rest of the need for speed games this is an older game that was released a couple years ago and uh, it is for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles or uh, actually yeah I'm pretty sure it's for PlayStation 3 but I'm not a hundred percent but I am going to be playing on the Xbox 360 and uh, this game is a lot different than most Need for Speeds because uh, as soon as you think of Need for Speed you think of fast street racing uh, cops chasing you trying to outrun the cops and you can fly by corners fly by uh, other opponents and get the first place very easily well you're going to be in for quite a surprise when it comes to Need for Speed Shift because this game takes a lot of skill it's uh, gonna probably take you quite a, a good while to get used to and it takes place on real racetracks around the world so <clears throat> Need for Speed Shift will give you the chance to visit some of the most legendary racetracks in the world and some of the most legendary and fastest cars in the world so I hope you guys are ready to um, unleash the speed and I am going to be guiding you through career mode step by step so whenever you're ready go ahead and pop in need for speed shift and go ahead and uh, create a new profile and choose the start career the best drivers the most powerful cars the highest stakes only the truly gifted make it to the NFS world tour You need to prove yourself right away, stand out, master new skills, and test your abilities to move through the tiers. You'll race on world-renowned tracks, gain entry to new competitions, and drive the most sought-after cars in the world. Your goal and final destination is the NFS World Tour, where only the top racers in the world will battle it out for the championship. We have a great opportunity ahead of us. We've secured a car for the race at Brands Hatch. 
This is the first step in your career toward the NFS World Tour. Let's get out there. Alright, so pretty much you are going to be um, racing in numerous different races and your ultimate goal is to make it to the Need for Speed World Tour which is on some of the toughest tracks to navigate in some of the fiercest hey, and fastest cars race. in the world so let's show them what we can do with this thing, okay? against the best drivers We're up next for so fortunately this is our last for us to really dial in those settings for the big race this afternoon okay uh, telemetry is recording take a lap and we'll get some settings dialed in for you So fortunately for us, they have secured us a vehicle. Alright, it's nice and easy. We've done test left right this a million times. And uh, you fortunately have a vehicle right off the bat. And your first race is just going to be a practice run. Uh, the game pretty much sees how you drive and will give you a setting. Okay, now there, run it just the way you always do. It's nice and easy. Now there are uh, numerous different uh, settings that you can use. The game will automatically give you a setting based on how good you drive in the first race. So if you're horrible and you're going off the track and you're taking forever right, to finish the race, there. Well done. the game will automatically set you at a setting that will help you drive your car. How about these settings? You want to look them in and take another lap? Okay, so based on your performance, uh, the game will recommend these settings. You can adjust them to your preference. To change these settings later, go to the options under Gameplay Options menu. So the AI difficulty is pretty much how the other cars are going to be racing against you. You have easy, medium, hard. Uh, so if this is your first time, I highly recommend putting it on easy. If you're experienced, put it on medium. And if you played this game numerous times and you feel you are very good and confident in your abilities, you can choose hard. For now, I'm just going to choose easy. And the handling model, you have between experienced, pro, and casual. Now what casual does is when you are driving it will occasionally help you out. Uh, say you are flying down the road and you're coming up on a very sharp turn. It will automatically brake for you. So that means you don't even have to brake. The game will automatically brake for you. Your car damage will show you the visual damage on your car. Or if you choose to full, then even if you damage your car, it might stall out and uh, make you forfeit the race, causing you to take a loss. So I'm just going to put it on visual all only. Your transmission. For those of you who like to uh, shift your car uh, manually, you can go ahead and choose that to manual. However, if you like the automatic transmission where the car automatically shifts itself, you can go ahead and put it on automatic. Next up we have the anti-lock brakes. So uh, what anti-lock brakes do is it occasionally brake brakes for you uh, such as you're coming up on a very steep turn it will brake itself. Stability control really helps you out when you are driving in straightaways going top speed. Your car will wobble all over the place. So if you have this on, it will uh, help you out significantly on the straightaways and turns. Finally, we have traction, traction control. Now what traction is, it's your, is your vehicle's grip on the road. If you are taking a turn and you want to be as precise as possible, you're going to want it to be on high. However, if you choose low or off, then it's an even greater challenge for those who have more experience in this game.
So for now, I'm going to go ahead and choose the normal settings. And I'm going to go ahead and start up the career. So pretty much that first race was just a practice run for the game to kind of see how good you are at driving. And it will automatically choose settings based on your performance. However, if you don't like the settings that the game has recommended to you, you can change them at any time. And furthermore, you can change them later on in the game by going to the options menu. The better you do out there today, the more cash we'll have for a car. Now we've only got one shot to make some money, so let's play as well, alright? Go for the podium. Okay, so after the practice run, you will automatically be thrown into the first real race of the game. Now you can press the X button on the Xbox 360 controller to change your view. Personally, I like the view of seeing my car. However, some people do like watching the inside view of the car or even from the hood. I'm going to quickly turn down the audio because this thing is roaring in my ear. There we go. Alright. So now you'll automatically be thrown in the first real race of the game. And pretty much uh, this race is going to, depending on what position you place in, you will be able to earn cash to actually buy your first car of the game. So the car we're racing in isn't our first car of the game. In fact, it's only a rental car. Pretty much we were set up with a rental car for the first race so that we can make a little bit of cash and buy the car of, that we want. So it really, really uh, all depends on this first race see how much money that you can actually uh, have so if you want the most money that you can actually make and you want to be able to buy the best car at the start of the game you're really going to want to uh, place first place in this first race so again if you are losing and you want to come in first place all you have to do is press start and choose restart before the end of the race Make sure you do this because once you cross the finish line, you will no longer be able to restart the race. So this race is two laps long, so just keep an eye out. And your main objective is to just kind of follow this green line. Uh, when it's green, that means you can accelerate by holding the right trigger. When it turns yellow, that means you should let off the gas and just kind of coast with your vehicle. And when it turns red, that means you need to press the brake in your vehicle in order to slow down. So you can follow this uh, courser, which is the navigate line, which is the green line found on the road. And that will help you out. Yeah, nice one. Great podium placing. The three's are going to start us out on the right foot. Okay, so for getting first place in this race, we win $40,000 which is pretty good for the first race of the game. Well, that just won us enough money to get a car and start our own career. Looks like we're gonna head overseas now. We'll be racing on some tight city courses and some fast technical circuits. I've lined us up some special events I think will really challenge your skills. Gonna be a lot of talented drivers out there. If you wanna prove yourself, you gotta sharpen your driving style. 
But keep your eye on the prize. A lot of tears to work your way through. But remember... The ultimate goal is the NFS World Tour and the championship. Okay, mate, this is where your racing career begins. Okay, so after the first so, uh, race of the game... So, we've got race winning, so let's get ourselves a new ride, all right? Now, you can either spend all your money on a car up front or save some extra cash for upgrades. Keep in mind, not all cars can take nitrous or compete in drift races, and only some cars can be works converted. And remember, if you ever want to sell your car, just head over to my cars. Okay, then. Let's have a look around. Okay, so after the first race of the game, depending on uh, what you place, you will have a certain amount of cash to spend and it is displayed in the upper left hand corner of the screen so as you can see we have forty thousand dollars and the first car we're going to be buying is off of the tier one category now uh, before we begin you can quickly uh, take a look at all the cars in the game by pressing the right or left bumper to switch between tiers you have four tiers and then you have drift cars and then you have the all cars option so before we get into the big boy cars, let's take a look around tier 1. We have the Audi S3, the Audi S4, the Audi TT Coupe 6, or the Audi TT Coupe 3.2 Quattro, the BMW 135i Coupe, Chevrolet Cobalt SS, Ford Escort RS Cosworth, Ford Focus ST, Honda Civic SI, Honda S2000, Infiniti G35, Mazda MX-5, Mazda RX-8, Nissan 200SX, Nissan 240S, Nissan 350Z, Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR, Renault Sport Megan RS, Scion IC, Seat Leon Cupra, Toyota Corolla GTS, Volkswagen Golf GTI, Volkswagen Sir Akao, Sir Akko, sorry. Pretty hard to... Figure out. Now some of these cars are a good amount of money, over $40,000. So unfortunately you cannot buy them right off the bat. You're going to have to win races in order to accumulate enough money to buy them. So for now, I think I'm going to go with the BMW 135i Coupe. So if you're uncertain of which car you want to use, let's first take a look at how the car's performance are displayed. So you can choose a car and when you choose it, you can get the display of the car to see what it looks like. Now off to the right you will see a small performance sheet. The first thing that you need to take note of is the car rating which is displayed in yellow. Now as you can see the BMW 135i Coupe has a car rating of 4.40. Now the car rating is the overall rating of the car. So the better the car the higher the car rating number. Underneath the car rating you have the top speed which is displayed by a bar and the actual top speed is displayed in purple so the higher the top speed the more purple you will see beneath top speed is acceleration which is how fast your car gets up and goes from 0 to 60 beneath acceleration you have handling which is how good your car handles and takes corners beneath handling you have braking which is how well your car will slow down and brake in order to take certain corners. Beneath the stats of the car you have the tier number of the car which is tier 1, the drivetrain of the car which is RWD which is short for real wheel, rear wheel drive and then finally off to the right you have price which is $35,000. So if you did not place first in that last race unfortunately you will not be able to buy this BMW which you see here so if you really want to you can go ahead and restart the game in order to win that race remember if you're losing all you have to do is use the restart option under the menu 
under the pause menu. <coughs> finally, well not finally, but next up, if you look beneath the uh, car rating in the car stats, it says performance stats Y. What that means is you press the Y button on the Xbox 360 controller in order to see the performance stats. So we're going to go back to the BMW and in the performance stats screen you will see the car region which is where the car was made so the BMW was made in Europe because it says European the weight of the car which is 3,380 pounds now the uh, weight of the car affects everything it's how much the car weighs so that has a great factor in how fast the car has uh, in terms of top speed acceleration and handling the power which is 302 horsepower which will give you a good idea of how uh, fast the car will get up and go and finally we have torque well hold on I rephrased that wrong power uh, is 302 horsepower now what horsepower is is how fast the car will reach top speed so pretty much uh, horsepower really doesn't factor in until you have a good uh, amount of speed so let's say the car maxes out at 100 miles per hour horsepower will start kicking in around 50 miles per hour and it will help you achieve 100 miles per hour which is the car's top speed beneath power we have torque which is 300.00 lobes per feet now what torque is is how fast the car will get up and go from 0 to 60 so again torque is the factor between 0 to 60 and horsepower is the factor between 60 miles per hour to the top speed so the torque is the primary factor for beginning if you want a car that will get up and go really quick then you want to look at the torque however if you want a car that will reach top speed quicker than it will get up and go you want to look at horsepower so now that I've pretty much explained that you can push Y to go back to the <clears throat> overall rating now the final thing we're gonna look at is at the very bottom hand left of the screen it says available upgrades so for this car the available upgrades are nitrous works and drift now what that means is nitrous will significantly increase the acceleration of your car works is a really really good um, upgrade as let me tell you how this works really quick in order to get works you have to buy all performance upgrades for the car once you have bought every single performance upgrade for the car you can press select in order to works convert the car what works does is it increases all the stats of the car as well as uh, modifies the look of your vehicle works will put a body kit on your vehicle a spoiler a roll cage in the back different rims possibly different rims a different color paint job possibly and increase all of the performance stats so works is pretty much an all-around upgrade for the car that can only be purchased once all of the performance stats have been purchased for the car finally oh one last thing to note on for works if you need to be very careful when converting your car into works because some competitions or certain races of the game will not allow works vehicles to participate so you're going to want to make sure that you complete all of the races first before you convert your car into the works category because if you miss the race uh, earlier in the game and you want to go back and complete it but you have already uh, works modified your car then you may not be able to participate in that race with your car because it has been works modified so always be careful before converting your car into works and make sure you have all of the races done so that you can move on to the harder races with your works car finally it says drift now what drift is it's a completely different category of racing drifting is uh, what you would call sliding around corners racking up points for each slide the person with the most points wins once you have converted your car into a drift car 
it's going to be very hard to get your car into a normal race because drifting and racing are two different categories in this game so just be very careful before you start upgrading your car into the works category or drift category with all that taken care of we can uh, choose which car we want I'm gonna go ahead and choose the BMW 135i coupe it's thirty five thousand dollars now when you choose to purchase it you can choose with the available cash in the game or you can use your Microsoft points in order to purchase the car to save your in-game cash however you want to choose I'm gonna choose available cash go ahead and buy the car that you want alright nice choice we're starting off with tier one race competitions if we can earn enough stars in these races we should be able to unlock more events earning stars will also help us gain access to a higher level of competition in tier two okay so after you've bought your car you will be at the race menu now I'll quickly uh, dis uh, quickly explain this menu so at the very top of the screen you will see your stars now you get stars for winning races and completing certain requirements within each race the more stars you get the closer you come to unlocking the next tier set of races so underneath your current amount of stars which we currently have zero you will see 30 stars to unlock tier 2 that means that once you have 30 stars tier 2 will be unlocked and you can compete in the next set of races which are going to be harder and will require you to buy a tier 2 car in order to participate in the races so for now we're going to focus on tier 1 at the top right hand corner you will see your current car which is the 135 i coupe and at any time you can press the Y button on the Xbox 360 controller in order to be taking to your cars I'm gonna go ahead and press Y now now from here you can see you have my cars the car lot my cars is where you can go to look at your cars and choose which car you want to uh, race in beneath the my car screen you have the car lot which is where we were just at the car lot you can access at any time from this menu where you can go to buy new cars and different vehicles beneath the car lot you have the visuals option now you can choose this to go into visuals and change the looks of your car such as paint jobs body kits spoilers rims whatever you want the visuals of your car beneath visuals you have upgrades now here is the main thing we're going to be focusing on you can choose upgrades at any time to okay, pull up the upgrade menu performance handling and body work your choice as to where we start okay so from here you have several different options you can choose from now since you're only in tier one you can only begin with the roman numeral one once you have either bought all of the items in the one or advanced to the next tier which is tier two you can uh, access the roman numeral two from the upgrade menu and then once you have bought all the upgrades in the roman numeral two or reached the tier three then you can focus on stage three which is the roman numeral three the next thing to the right is the aerodynamics now this consists of body kit, body kits, cockpit upgrades, and weight reductions. So we'll get into more detail later whenever we decide to do some upgrading to our car. Far, and the farthest option to the right is the roll cage, race parts. Here you can access nitrous, race exhaust, shorter final drive, increased boost, steam wielded chassis, brake master cylinders, and wider tires or wheels now each different upgrade you purchase from here will increase your car stats and that will be displayed on the right you will see the increase of stats which is in green so look over to the purple bars which represent your top speed acceleration handling and braking and then choose whichever upgrade you want and from there you can see in green how much the purple bar will increase now that increase is permanent so you're going to want to be very careful on how you upgrade your car however 
we shouldn't have said permanent because you can actually sell the upgrades if you don't like them. So say you buy the engine stage one. You can see it upgrades our top speed and acceleration slightly. If you for some reason don't like that, you can choose to sell it, which will remove that upgrade as well as refund some of your money. <coughs> So now that we have covered the upgrades, finally we can use the tuning option. Now here you will be cho you will have a decision. Do you want do you wish to to use the advanced performance tuning features? If you choose yes, you really need to know what you're doing here. Because here you can choose to tune your car for whatever kind of racer you are. So if you want your car to have faster acceleration and get a better jump off the line, you can do that by tuning your car however you wish. However, if you don't really know what you're doing, it's better to, to just completely leave this menu alone. Now that we have taken care of the home menu, we're going to head back to the race menu. So we've already covered the stars, how to, un how to gain stars in order to unlock the next tier and our current car as well as the my cars menu so beneath that and in the middle of the screen you will see the tier one now this represents all of the different categories in tier one so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the race coalition upon choosing a new category you will get a brief descri description on that category Now in the race, race Coalition menu, you will see several different options. Now these options here are the individual races of this competition, or, the, or this category, however you want to call it. So as you can see, we have a total of five different races in this category. So this is where we're going to begin racing, but for now, I'm going to head back and explain the final things of this game. At the very, very bottom left hand or right hand corner you will see the friends leaderboard left trigger button. So at any time you can press the left trigger button in order to pull up the friends leaderboard. Now if you don't have an existing EA account you can create one at any time. However we're going to get to that later. For now all you need to do <coughs> is just uh, know that the friends leaderboards can be accessed at any time by pressing the left trigger button from the menu. Finally, you have the B button to head back a menu or the A button to select. So with all that done, we're going to go ahead and head into the race coalition and we're going to choose the first race of the game. You can choose these races in any order. However, it's better to start with the first one and work your way to the right. Now. As soon as you have a race selected, you can press the left bumper to get the event details. Here you will see the race, uh, you will see the stars that you can acquire within each race and the, and the certain requirements that you have to complete in order to gain stars. So as you can see you will get three stars depending on your podium finish. Now the podium finish is pretty much a what place you place. So if you get first place you will get all three stars. If you get second or third place though you only get two of the three stars. And if you get anything under third place you will only get one star. Finally down below you will see the points threshold. Now in game you will be able to gain points in a numerous amount of ways such as driving over the driver line which is the green line on the road the more you drive perfectly on that line you will slowly gain points the points are displayed at the very top of the screen we will get in more detail about that later though for now all you need to know is that the points threshold is you need to reach a certain amount of points in order to gain the first star and then you need to reach another certain amount of points which is usually greater than the first in order to gain both stars and there are certain there are different requirements within each race so before you start the race it's very important 
to check out the event details in order to see what requirements you need to do in order to gain stars within the race. Beneath the star requirements, you will see the rewards. For first place in this race, we will gain $4,000. For second or third place, you will get less amount of money. So all that it really lists is the first place cash reward, which is 4000 Beneath the rewards is the restrictions. Here you will see what the restrictions are for this race. Now, the first restriction is a tier 1 car required, meaning you cannot bring a tier 2, 3, or 4 car into this race. It has to be tier 1. Further to the right, you will see your best time. Now since you haven't completed any races, all the races uh, will say not raced for your best time. However, once you do complete the race, you will have the best time completed that you completed the race in listed here. Finally, off to the right, you will see a map of the race so you can map out the race track and you can see where the turns are and where the straightaways are. Beneath that you will see the number of laps which the race requires. So there's this is going to be a two lap race. And then further to the right you will see the distance which is 1.05 miles. That gives you an idea of how long the race is. Finally at the bottom right you will see the name of the racetrack which is Al Pintal. Now that we have covered the complete menu and you got a good idea of how to look at this game oh also one last thing before we go inside the picture of the race you will see zero out of five now that represents how many stars you can gain within that race so there's a total of five stars we can get and since we haven't raced it or even attempted it we have zero now however once you complete the race say you won all of the stars that you can possibly get out of this race it will say five out of five that means you have got all the stars and you don't need to worry about playing the game this race again for more stars however if you only get two out of the five stars you only see two out of five meaning that you should probably race again in order to get the five out of five stars at the very bottom or beneath the picture you will see the name of the race which is race at Alpental and again you can press the left bumper to see the event details further to the right you will see the next race on the list which is race at Glendale Club and as you can see there are a total of five stars that we can get in this race the next race is called race at Dakota National a total of five stars is what we can get in this race the fourth race is race at London River. This also will net us five stars as long as we complete all the objectives. The final race in this competition is the race at Autopolis Lakeside. Again, giving us a total of five stars for the perfect completion. So now that we have took, taken a look at everything in the menu, that's going to conclude this episode of Need for Speed Shift. I'll see you guys back next time where we really start working into the races and start knocking these things off of the list. See you guys next time.